in this video, I want to pay particular attention to the role of the slope and the y-intercept in helping us determine how many times a pair of lines intersects. So I want to look at a few examples here. This first example, you can see I have two lines, y equals negative 2x plus 3 and y equals x minus 3. What I want to do first is just identify what the slope and y-intercept of each of these lines are. And that's important because in this video, I really want to show you how the slope and y-intercept help us determine the manner in which these two lines will intersect. So from previous studies, you'll likely recognize that these two lines are written in slope-intercept form. That helps me very easily pick out a slope of negative 2 for this line and a slope of 1 for this line. Remember, if there's nothing written in front of an x, it's implied that there's a coefficient of 1. So my first line has a slope of negative 2 and my second line has a slope of 1. Right away, you can see that these slopes are not equal. In slope-intercept form, it's also very easy to pick out the y-intercept. In this line, we have a y-intercept of 3. In the case of this line, we have a y-intercept of negative 3. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to plot both of these lines on this grid just so we can get a visual representation of what we're dealing with here. You may recall that it's relatively simple to plot a line in slope-intercept form. So starting with this first line, we know that the y-intercept is 3. You'll recall that we can start with a y-intercept on the y-axis. So I'll plot a point at 0, 3 there. And remember, we can use the slope to produce a few other points on that line. In this case, our slope is negative 2. So what we'll do is we will rise negative 2, so that's a dropping by 2 units, and then we're going to move over 1 unit to produce this point right here. And to ensure our lines are accurate, we might as well plot a third point. I'll drop 2 units again and move over 1 to plot a point right here. Connecting those three points with a nice straight line will result in this line. And remember, it's always a good idea to use a ruler if you're drawing these by hand. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the second line. I've got a y-intercept of negative 3, so that's down here at 0, negative 3, and I'm going to use my slope of 1 to rise 1, run 1, and I'll produce another point by rising 1, running 1. Right, and you can see that point actually falls on that red point. Connecting those three points with a nice straight line will look something like this. So these two lines intersected at what's called a point of intersection, 2, negative 1 in this case. And as it turns out, we could predict that just by looking at the slopes and the y-intercepts. This red line started at 3 with a slope of negative 2. The green line started at negative 3 with a slope of 1. At some point, these two lines have to intersect. They don't have the same slope. And as it turns out, that is a characteristic of any linear system that has different slopes. If you start at some point and you have a different slope than the other line, you will intersect with that line at some point. So that's the first case where we can really just use our slopes to predict that these two lines will in fact intersect at a single point. And so we say that there is one solution to this linear system, which happens to be at a point of intersection. I want to repeat that process, and for this example, we'll start the same way. We'll pick out the slopes from each of these lines as 3. Remember, the slope is the value in front of x. And we'll do the same thing to identify the y-intercepts. And so I'll repeat the process I use for graphing these two lines. And I'll do this a little bit quicker this time, just to keep this video concise. But again, I'm going to start with the y-intercept and use the slope to produce three points for each of these lines. As I develop my two lines here, you can see that these lines appear to be parallel. That should make sense. It doesn't matter where I start. If I start at 1 and I rise 3 and run 1, that's going to take me to this point here. If I start at negative 2 and I rise 3 and run 1, I've done the exact same thing but from a different point. So these two lines are parallel and will never intersect. And as it turns out, that is a characteristic of linear systems that have slopes that are the same. These types of linear systems have no solutions because the lines are parallel and that's a result of them having the same slope. They don't have to have the same y-intercept. In fact, they shouldn't, and we'll get into that a little bit in the next example. But the fact that the slopes are identical here and the y-intercepts are different is what makes these two lines parallel and prevents them from intersecting, resulting in a linear system with no solutions. All right, the final example I wanna look at starts with something that looks a little bit different. If you take a look at this first line, this is not written in slope-intercept form. In fact, this is written in standard form. This line is written in slope-intercept form. So if we want to compare the slopes and y-intercepts, we do need to do a little bit of algebra work to rearrange this equation to write it in slope-intercept form. In order to do that, really what I'm going to do is just solve for y so that it's written in y equals mx plus b form. Easiest way to do that is probably just to take the negative 2y and move it over to the other side. That's going to make it positive, which will make it easier to solve for. So doing that results in 4x minus 2 equals 2y. The final step really just being dividing by 2 on both sides to produce y equals 2x minus 1. And just to keep things simple, I'll write the y on the left-hand side so you can really compare these two equations. So after a little bit of algebra work, 
you can see that I'm able to pick out the slope and y-intercept of this new slope-intercept form equation. In this case, I've got a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1. And the same is the case for the second equation, a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1. In order to get an idea of what's happening graphically, I'll quickly plot these. And again, I'm going to do this a little bit quicker because, again, I want to keep this video brief. But starting at the y-intercept of negative 1, using the slope of 2 to produce three other points, you'll see that I have this line. What you'll see is that I actually end up with the same line, one on top of the other. And that should be no surprise here. I've got two lines that are identical. So it stands to reason that plotting them both will produce the same line twice. And so I can't show both at the same time, but that should be intuitive. And so as it turns out, we can make the conclusion that if two lines have the same slope and same y-intercept, they're going to fall on top of each other. And from this, it's easy to see that really subbing in any x value into either line will produce the same point, which means that I'm actually going to have an infinite number of points of intersection all along these two lines. So we say that a linear system with the same slope and same y-intercept has many solutions or infinitely many solutions. These lines fall on top of one another, so it makes sense that there are an infinite number of points of intersection all along the pair of lines. So in this video, we looked at three different cases for a linear system containing two lines. If the slopes are not the same, those lines are going to intersect once, resulting in a linear system with one solution. If the slopes of the lines are the same, but the y-intercepts are not, those lines are going to be parallel, which means they're never going to intersect, and you're going to have a linear system with no solutions. Lastly, if you have two lines with the same slope and same y-intercept, they're going to fall on top of one another, and there's going to be an infinite number of points of intersection, resulting in a linear system with an infinite number of solutions.